Welcome back, listeners, to the Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep or until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in the book of West African Folklore by W. H. Parker. In the first story, Kofi loses his mother and is treated horribly by his stepmother, but the gods have a reward for him by leaving him out. And in the second story, a wolf is eating an old woman's sheep and she finds help in a strange companion. Okay, let's begin. Kofi and the Gods Kofi was the oldest son of a farmer. The farmer had two wives. The first wife gave birth to Kofi, and he was her only child. When the boy was three years old, his mother died. Kofi's stepmother was given the task of raising the boy. After this, she had many children. Kofi was, of course, the oldest child. When he was about ten years old, his father also died. Kofi had no other family except for his stepmother, who worked him hard all day long. As he grew older, she saw how clever and handsome Kofi was, much more so than her other children. She became very jealous of the boy. He was such a good hunter that day after day he came home with bags full of meat or fish. Every day she treated him in the same way. She cooked the meat and then portioned it out. She gave every child a large helping. But when it was Kofi's turn, she would say, Oh, my dear son Kofi, there is none left for you. Maybe next time there will be enough. Be a good boy and go to the field and get some ripe pawpaw. Kofi never complained. Never once did he taste the meat that he had caught. The other children were served delicious food, but when the bowl came around to Kofi, there was never enough to put any on his plate. One evening, when Kofi's plate was again empty, he prepared to go to the field to fetch some pawpaw for his supper. All of a sudden, one of the gods appeared in the village, carrying a great big bag over his shoulder. He summoned all the villagers together with these words. Oh, my villagers, I brought something for you. It is a big bag of death for you to share. Then he began to distribute the contents of his bag to the villagers. When he came to Kofi, he said, Oh, my poor son Kofi, there was never enough food for you, nor is there any death. As he said these words, everyone in the village died except for Kofi. He was left there to reign in peace, which he did very happily. The End Okay, and story number two, The Lion and the Wolf. A certain old lady in Damango had a very fine flock of sheep. She had fed and cared for them so well that they became famous for their fatness. One night a wicked wolf heard of them and made up his mind to eat them. Night after night he snuck up to the old dame's cottage and killed and ate a sheep. The poor woman tried her best to save her animals from harm, but she failed. At last there was only one sheep left, out of all of the flock. The owner was very sad. She feared that it, too, would be taken away from her, in spite of all she tried to do. While she was grieving over the thought of this, a lion came into her village. Seeing her sad face, he asked the reason for it. She told him all about it. Then he offered to punish the wicked wolf. He went to the sheep pen, where the last sheep was usually kept, while the sheep was moved to another place. In the meantime, the wolf was on his way to the cottage. As he walked, he met a fox. The fox was somewhat afraid of him, and was prepared to run away. The wolf, however, told him where he was going, and invited him to come along with. The fox agreed, and the two set off together. 
They arrived at the cottage and went straight into the sheep pen, thinking of the delicious feast that lay ahead. The wolf at once jumped upon the sheep, while the fox waited behind in the shadows. Just as Fox was going to enter and help out the wolf, there was a bright flash of lightning. By the light of it, the fox could see that the wolf was not attacking a sheep, but a lion. He hastily ran away, shouting as he went, Look at his face! Look at his face! During the flash, the wolf looked at the so-called sheep. To his dismay, he found that he had made a great mistake. At once he began to make humble apologies, but all in vain. Lion refused to listen to any of his explanations and speedily put him to death. The End Wow, I like that first story, that Kofi did his stuff and just ate his pawpaw, and the gods were like, you were left out before, and we'll, we'll leave you out again. And, of course, a big worry amongst the people was always struggles with step-parents or whose offspring are going to lead the next generation, so a lot of these stories touch on that. And in the second story, I was surprised to see a lion jump in and help the woman. I thought it would go down in a much different way. Maybe the lion would just eat everybody, but... It was really lovely to see the wolf get his comeuppance. And the podcast shout-out today is to The Great Khan's Tent, hosted by Saif Beg. He goes through and reads old stories and talks about history and folklore stretching from North Africa to South and East Asia. It's wonderful storytelling, and from a perspective that I hadn't heard before. And so if you like his show as much as I do, go and give him a listen, a rating, and a review. And this week's listener shout-out is to the city of Winnipeg, The city's name comes from a Cree word meaning muddy waters, Winnipeg. It is also where the Métis Nation started, which is made up of people from First Nations and European ancestry. It is also a traditional trading place between several peoples such as the Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, Ininu, Cree, Oji Cree, Diné, and Dakota. It also boasts of having the highest percentage of Filipino immigrants of any Canadian city. Maybe the Reddit on Wiki fellas could compromise and meet in Winnipeg for the Pinoy Canada crossover we all want. Anyway, to my listeners in Winnipeg, pardon my pronunciation, I say, Ni naskum den and kawimeo tipiskisin. Thank you and good night. <laughs>